Hey everybody, welcome to PTW Amps. Um, I have on the table here a replica of a 6G3 Deluxe uh, brown face amplifier. Uh, so this is a modern creation of uh, very closely following their traditional early 60s 6G3 Deluxe amp. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the circuit and a little bit about the process that went into building this thing. Um, when I'm going to build a, a replica style amp like this, the first thing I do is get the original schematic and uh, there are a few things that I change. Uh, the grounding scheme, I use a more modern grounding scheme than the simply sort of random grounding to the chassis uh, style. Uh, when I first built this thing, actually following the traditional grounding, I wanted to try it out. Uh, it ended up with a, a pretty nasty ground loop and a pretty nasty hum. So uh, what I've got instead is the power supply elements run to this star ground here. And then the preamp, a little bit hard to see, but there's actually a preamp ground bus running back to uh, the input jack. So that makes this amp nice and quiet, uh, well grounded, and so on. Um, now getting back to the process of building this, after I have uh, studied the schematic, I draw my own um, layouts here. I'm trying to get this good shot of this. Uh, done to scale. Uh, I find this is not absolutely necessary that, that a person does this, but uh, what I like in this process is essentially I build the amp on paper first before I build it in reality and as you can you can kind of see here this is done exactly to scale on graph paper so when it comes to machining the chassis building the circuit board later on it's all done to scale so that I can simply take my measurements off of the drawing and translate them into the the real thing once I build it uh, that's that would be the drawing for the laying out of the components in the chassis and then there's another drawing that is for the wiring gives me a little bit of a sense of the different colors of wire I'm going to use <clears throat> so I can figure out how much of it I'm going to need and also I like knowing how long these wire runs need to be uh, since another way to really cut down on noise in an amplifier like this is to keep the wire runs um, as, uh, as short as possible. Obviously they need to be as long as possible. The other thing I like knowing is for the connections that are under the circuit board that can't be seen once the amp is assembled, I like knowing exactly where they are uh, in the event of any necessary future troubleshooting and, and uh, stuff like that. So a few little things change between the drawing and the final amplifier, but for the most part this is a pretty close representation of what the final amp uh, will be. Circuit board in this amplifier, I'm using a phrenolic uh, board. Um, it's essentially the same material that's used in the making of printed circuit boards, although in this case I've simply just used a blank phrenolic. I've coated it with heat resistant enamel. It's Essentially it's oven paint is what I've used there. Uh, and simply because I just I like the black uh, look uh, for my circuit boards. Um, and then I've turned this into an eyelet board, so the eyelets like what are used in the traditional uh, vintage fender amps. Um, I've, I've followed the technique of soldering from underneath the board, um, and it produces these, hopefully, <laughs> I mean, in most cases, nice shiny uh, solder joints. It makes it also very easy to confirm that there are no cold solder joints. I mean, if there's any cracks or anything going on with the with the soldering, um, say in the future, um, it can be examined fairly easily once it's all kind of neat and tidy like that. Um, filament supply for the power tubes is here, run above the rest of the circuitry in the traditional way. Uh, these are 6.3 volt, volt filaments. Now the Hammond power transformer for this amplifier does not come with a center tap. So typically without a center tap for the filaments, 
you're going to get a lot of hum. So I have created an artificial, a little bit hard to see, but an artificial center tap down here using two 100 ohm resistors. Um, what else to say? Oh, I should say something about the tremolo circuit in this amplifier. This is a bias-based tremolo. The controls actually connect directly to the bias board here. Um, it has um, uh, speed and intensity. Just trying to see which is which here. Speed and intensity. One thing I added um, that the traditional 63 did not have is I've added in a simple on-off switch for the tremolo. Um, just knowing that, you know, tremolos, especially these bias-based tremolos, they have a tendency to, to tick and cause noise and little things like that, um, especially as they start to age and capacitors start to wear out and that kind of thing. So by having an off switch, it simply removes the tremolo from the circuit. There are, of course, a lot of players out there aren't necessarily going to use the tremolo very often. So if you're a player that, you know, doesn't need to use the tremolo, simply switch it off. Flick of the switch, it's back in the circuit. Um, using Sprague capacitors here for bypass capacitors and also for the bias capacitor. Um, and underneath uh, the, so, you know, the doghouse, underneath the chassis here, I've got F and T filter capacitors. Uh, decent quality, I've had pretty good luck with those. Um, any repairs or builds that I've used the F and T's of I've always found them to be uh, pr pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff. Um, that's about it, I guess. Uh, there is. Oh, I'll just mention also the rectifier, tube rectified amp using a GZ34, uh, two 6V6 power tubes for about 20 watt output. There you go. Thanks for watching.